Singapore and China have pledged deeper cooperation in areas ranging from public health to trade with the recent signings of 10 agreements. Eugene Tan is an Associate Professor of Law at Singapore Management University. Eugene holds degrees from the National University of Singapore Faculty of Law, the London School of Economics and Stanford University. Eugene, great to see you once again. Thank you for having me, Mike. It's always a pleasure. Singapore-China trade has increased significantly in recent years. Can you tell us more about the recent history of China-Singapore relations? Um, certainly. Uh, 2020 marks you know, the 30th anniversary of the um, establishment of uh, diplomatic relations between Singapore and China. Um, although uh, ties between uh, Singapore and China go back uh, you know, to the um, early 70s, um, but out of sensitivity to the concerns of uh, Singapore's neighbours, um, you know, Singapore delayed uh, this establishment of formal diplomatic ties, you know, until all these ASEAN uh, Association of Southeast Asian member states have established uh, diplomatic ties with, with, with China. Um, so, but since then, you know, over the last 30 years, um, you know, relations have been uh, very multifaceted, you know, very deep, very rich. Uh, we also have, um, you know, significant uh, growth in trade and investments, you know, in, uh, of both countries. Um, we're looking at, um, you know, government to government projects, you know, so in, in many sense, uh, this is a very deep, rich and substantive uh, relationship. So if you think about the, the, the government to government projects, you know, these are those such as the Suto Industrial Park, um, the Tianjin uh, Eco City, and now the, the Tongting uh, Connectivity Initiative. And what all these projects serve to do really is to have both countries, you know, to work together, to share ideas, you know, to, to bring the different strengths to the table. And I think what this reflects really is, you know, the determination on the part of both countries and their leaders, uh, you know, to recognize that relationships need um, a lot of work. Um, you know, there is a need to grow the ties. There is a need to explore a new relationship, a new developments, new opportunities. Um, and we mustn't forget, uh, you know, China today is very different from the China that Singapore established ties with in 1990. Singapore has inked some major agreements with China, uh, deepening economic, financial, health and technical ties. But how is this viewed in Singapore? You know, in Singapore, I think, you know, Singaporeans will recognize uh, the need uh, for Singapore to maintain uh, healthy relations, you know, with as many countries as possible. Uh, and China is certainly uh, one of them, uh, you know, given its its rise, you know, over the last 30 years, uh, given the sort of impact, you know, that China has in so many different uh, areas of development, you know, the rise of the Chinese economy as well. Um, so the recent uh, inking of uh, several major agreements, you know, uh, to mark uh, the 30th anniversary of uh, diplomatic ties between uh, Singapore and China. Uh, these are very much welcome, particularly, you know, by the business, uh, scientific and, 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 and financial uh, uh, communities. I think there is a sense that uh, it is important to have uh, these agreements, you know, that will help to catalyze uh, closer ties, you know, enable Singapore to have uh, inroads, you know, into the Chinese market, if I can put it that way. Um, again, these ties are seen, you know, as an attempt to sustain and develop uh, stronger ties. Um, in China has much to offer, uh, and Singapore believes that it also has much to offer. Um, and I th think when you look at these agreements, uh, you know, I think there is the clear recognition uh, you know, that both countries appreciate uh, how these different ties, you know, whether you're talking about economic, financial, um, health or, or technical ties, um, you know, that, that they show both countries continuing to be relevant uh, to each other. Uh, what, what that also indicates, you know, is how, you know, both countries have continued to nurture uh, their ties, you know, um, appreciating that Countries that evolve, uh, you know, with different strengths, with different capabilities. Uh, and so Singapore's ability, you know, to 
offer technical assistance, you know, which was which was a mainstay of Singapore's program in the in the early days of our formal ties. Uh, you know, that has now uh, given way, uh, you know, to much more significant cooperation. Um, where I think you know there is a sense that um, there is a lot more that can be done. Uh, so it, it is a challenge, you know, for both countries to find new areas of development uh, and, and and to ensure, you know, that ties remain strong. China has been very aggressive towards Australia, where bilateral cooperation has been extensive over many decades. How is this conflict in the relationship and unilateral targeting of Australian goods being viewed in Singapore? Not much has actually been said um, in, in Singapore, right? So I think here, if you look at the corridors of power, um, you know, I think this is this is seen as um, you know a bilateral uh, issue, you know, a, a hiccup, you know, that will have to be worked at, you know, by uh, Australia uh, and, and China. Uh, but I think it's I wouldn't be surprised if you know there is a sense of regret. Um, you know, uh, in Singapore, you know, over the way uh, things have have developed, um, and, and so I think you know there is a view that you know if both countries uh, can can repair those ties, um, you know, there would be significant uh, advantage to it. I mean, you know, to think about you know a hundred billion dollars of trade, uh, you know, between uh, China and Australia, you know, and 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 how that all is going to be um, affected, I think. Here, you know, we are looking at um, a relationship where I, uh, where my sense is, you know, that sometimes megaphone diplomacy, um, you know, will not work so well. You know, that sometimes, you know, a softly, softly approach, if I can put it that way, will work better. Um, I think in any close relationship, uh, there will always be disagreements, uh, tension, uh, and Singapore has experienced that, you know, you know, with China, uh, but then. I think what it requires then, you know, is for leaders and the diplomats of both countries, you know, to to work at at the at the differences uh, away, you know, from the public eye, um, and 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 I think that's how diplomatic diplomatic ties can be rebuilt. I mean, personally, for me, you know, to see how you know in a matter of five six years, you know, the relationship. Um, uh, you know, being at a high and then going down to, you know, to, to, to the level that it is today, um, you know, I think that's somewhat uh, uh, tragic, uh, you know, but we're now seeing a, a, a sort of a, a truce, um, you know, and, and, and I suppose, you know, that's an attempt, uh, you know, by both countries, you know, having uh, each set their piece, you know, to, uh, to now, you know, get back to the table and, 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 and repair you know, what is essentially a very important relationship, not, not just to both countries, you know, but to the region uh, and to the world as well. There's key concerns, uh, most notably under the uh, Trump administration, about espionage and CCP influence in the US across a broad number of fronts. Do you think this could happen in Singapore? I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, the... The, the security community, uh, the intelligence community, uh, keeping a, a close eye on this. Um, but I think we should remember that uh, this exertion of of uh, foreign influence, uh, you know, is always there. You know, I mean, countries do it all the time. Uh, you know, there are just different modes of doing so. Uh, it is really an attempt to exert. Uh, you know what has been described, um, you know, as soft power, right? So, so the idea that uh, countries would be aligned with uh, your position, you know, without you having to coerce them, for example. But I think the key question is is not whether you know influence is being exerted, uh, but rather how the influence uh, is being exerted. Mm. Uh, and I think that, that becomes important, uh, you know, for any country to be able to be very firm and clear about what its national interests are, what are the, what are the bright lines that, that cannot be crossed. Um, and, and also, you know, the need for, for, for countries. You know, for, for example, Singapore, you know, is a very small nation state. Uh, you know, the need to protect our national sovereignty uh, and, and to ensure that countries, big or small, uh, friendly or not, 
uh, you know, recognize that. Um, and, and one critical ingredient, uh, you know, for uh, healthy uh, Sino-Singapore relations, if I can put it that way, uh, really is, uh, you know, the Singapore government's conscious at attempt uh, and effort, you know, to to reinforce on 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 on, on China, um, you know, that Singapore is not um, a Chinese state, um, you know. So even though we have three quarters of the population being uh, ethnically Chinese, uh, you know, we are certainly not, um, you know, another uh, uh, another China. Um, you know, a, another Taiwan or, or Hong Kong, you know, but we are an independent uh, sovereign nation state. And, and, and I think when uh, these fundamentals uh, are recognized and given effect to, you know, then I think that that helps to, uh, for bilateral relations to be kept on an even keel. How does Singapore view China's role with COVID-19 in maybe the creating or the exporting of this virus, which is just, uh, it's still here, believe it or not. It still is. Um, and, and, and so I think that's where the focus must be for now, right? The, the focus must be on, on uh, working across borders, uh, you know, perhaps in, in, in a sort of a global effort, you know, to, uh, to fight uh, COVID-19, you know, so whether that means, you know, sharing uh, expertise, you know, sharing ideas about uh, what could work uh, and what might not work. Uh, you know, I, I think this is something, this is a global pandemic. Uh, I think there is no time, you know, at this stage, you know, for finger pointing. Mm. Uh, certainly there are lessons to be learned, uh, but I think there there is a right time uh, and, and place, you know, and, 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 I, and I think it's a critical, you know, not to finger point, uh, not to take the, the, the view, you know, without a, a appropriate evidence, um, you know, that, that this was a malicious attempt. Uh, I think when you look at COVID-19, uh, it is a tragedy, right? It is a tragedy that has befallen, um, you know, the world. Um, you know, many people are affected. Um, and so it is really critical, you know, for countries uh, to come together. So when you think about now, uh, you know, with vaccines uh, being approved, um, you know, for use, emergency use. I think the challenge then becomes, you know, not so much about whether whether a country. Uh, uh, I think the challenge becomes, you know, how, how do you help countries mm. who may not be able to afford, you know, the vaccines, uh, you know, to be able to have um, the opportunity, you know, to to access them, right? Uh, because we certainly don't want a world, you know, in which. Uh, there is now this divide on, on uh, based uh, based on whether a country has vaccines or not, and and we should remember, you know that that because this is a pandemic, and, and so long as certain parts of the world are not adequately protected, um, it will come back to 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 even bite those countries, uh, you know, which, which have access to vaccines, because we we mustn't forget, we are looking at viruses, you know, which can mutate. Uh, and, and so, you know, the vaccines may be able to deal with the current strains of uh, the coronavirus, you know, but um, we, c we cannot say for certainty, uh, you know, that the virus will not mutate, uh, you know, for which, you know, um, the vaccines today, you know, may not be of, of any effect. Uh, one certainly hopes that we don't come to that, to yeah. that stage. But I think it's important to, you know, to recognize that no man an, is an island, um, you know, and, and in a situation like a global pandemic, uh, you know, it is time to close ranks, uh, and and once we have overcome, uh, you know, this threat, uh, then perhaps you know we, we can focus on on making sure you know that uh, that we do better uh, um, if a similar threat were to arise uh, in in future. You know, so I, I think you know Singapore's focus is very much on 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 working with like-minded countries, um, you know, in in in, in fighting uh, COVID nineteen, and so that also extends, you know, to, to the COVAX program, you know, so that's the WHO initiative, uh, you know, to try to ensure, you know, that, that uh, countries, you know, including the poor con uh, the countries which are, which may have difficulty getting vaccines, you know, will have mm. uh, you know, as much access to the vaccines as possible. I mean, this is a global threat and so it needs a global response rather than finger pointing. I don't know about you, uh, Eugene, but if I hear any more about COVID normal, I'm going to vomit. I just want normal. I just want to be able to go out, hop on a plane or whatever, 
uh, not have to wear a mask because I have a lovely smile <laughs> and, uh, and you have a lovely <laughs> smile too and just get back to being human. It's, that's, what, that's my New Year's, my New Year's resolution, just to get back to being human. Although many friends will say, for me to be human is almost the impossible dream. What's your, what's your um, great wish for 2021? I suppose you know for me 2021 i mean I've, i haven't given much thought, thought to it you know but but i but i share you know your sentiments uh, you know the need for for you know for humanity uh, for the world mm. uh, for and for each one of us you know to to use this crisis you know which which has hit many of us uh, in in very unexpected and, and challenging ways uh, you know to reflect on it and 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 the hope you know that we will come out better uh, and stronger, uh, you know, in in, a, in in terms of um, our humanity. Uh, I, I think you know th this is one um, episode, uh, a long one, uh, 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 a scary one, if I can put it that way. Uh, you know, in in which um, I begin to perhaps appreciate even more. Um, you know that that as human beings, you know, the, the need for uh, Community, the need for fellowship, the need for interaction—it's um, so crucial, um, you know. That even with technology, you know, which is not enabling me, you know, to be interviewed by you uh, here with me in Singapore and you in Australia, um, you know, that that there is still that that barrier, um, and and so you know, the question now is, you know, how can we blend, you know, the best of 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 the social interactions, you know, um, aided by technology, uh, you know, to bring out you know, uh, our humanity to bring the world closer together. Mm. Um, so, so I suppose my hope is that, you know, we will, we'll all become more human, uh, you know, with, with recognizing, you know, the, the importance, uh, of life, uh, and of values, uh, you know, in, in a very challenging world and challenging time as well. Eugene, have a wonderful 2021. We'll have a glass of great Australian wine for you. And, uh, talk to you early next year. Thank you, Mike. Uh, you know, ha ha have a wonderful holiday season and, and all the best wishes, uh, you know, to your team and you and your family for 2021.